Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part three of my virtual reality series. And this time we're going to be talking about mixed reality developments using the HTC Vive. In the previous two episodes, I made my own hacky VR gear with some Arduinos and a pixie cam to track coloured lights. There's some inertial measurement units and a lot of wire. And this uh, meant I could make a screen that I could wave around in the air to look around the virtual world and a hand controller so that I could interact with it. Now, normally my projects are funded mostly by Patreon. Have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots. And that's how most of my projects are funded. But in fact, in this case, my HTC Vive setup isn't funded by Patreon. I had an anonymous donation to the channel because someone liked my VR concept so much, they thought they'd help me out get some proper gear. So thanks very much for that. Um, it isn't someone who sells Vives. It isn't HTC, so it isn't a product placement video. It was the Vive that I really wanted because I think it's the best for tracking at the moment. And um, having tried it, it's pretty good. So obviously we've got tracked handsets and the tracked headset, and you can get additional trackers and additional handsets as well to track other objects. So a lot of my concepts around mixed reality, we're probably still going to use a monitor that's tracked in space as a virtual camera for some of it. Some of it will be immersive development, but the rest will be mixed reality. So adding an augmented reality environment to physical props like Ultron and various other things. So in this video, we're going to go through some of the concepts that I've got, which I'm going to develop in the future and have a quick look, a bit of a tech view of the HTC Vive and the trackers. We're not really going to do an unboxing because there's loads of those out there already. So what makes the tracking so good on the HTT Vive setup is the lighthouse trackers. And there's one up there and there is another one at the other end of the room. They can be five meters apart. They just plug into outlet power. There is a sync cable to join them, but generally you don't need it. If they can see each other, they actually sync up. And those send out an infrared sweep, which is picked up by sensors on the handsets and the headset. Um, and then those are properly tracked in space. And it runs at 90 frames a second and the tracking is amazing. So basically, unless you cover the sensors or you can't see them for some reason, like you put them in a bag, they can pretty much see them wherever you are. Generally, you have one of these lighthouses in front of you and one behind you, but they seem to work um, no matter what orientation you turn to. So this is the link box, and this has HDMI or mini display port, USB and power, and that plugs into your PC's graphics card. The headset's on cables, and that plugs into the link box, but the handsets are wireless. However, you can buy the lighthouses and the handsets separately, but if you try to just use those on their own, it wouldn't work. And that's because the handsets actually connect wirelessly, not to the link box, but back to the headset. So that's actually got a wireless link to the handsets in. So you can't use the handsets on their own for tracking in space without the headset connected, unfortunately. And you need a fairly decent graphics card to run it. I'm using a GTX 1060. You can use a slightly lower spec one. In fact, you could use any graphics card, but basically it would be really laggy. It wouldn't keep up with the frame rate. Although for development with a simple environment, you might get away with something less. So with the help of Morris the Mannequin, I've just got the headset on there so I can show you these and wave them around. Or you should be able to see the screen view there. So I'm waving the uh, handsets around. You can see they're really well tracked and I can go anywhere in the environment with them and uh, wave those around. And obviously we've got the uh, CAD or uh, CGI representation of them. So you can see as I move the triggers, they actually move in real life. And if I turn them around and put my fingers on the top there, you can see where my hands are on the trackpad. So all of that stuff is brought in. Of course, they can be skinned up as different things. The headset is, of course, tracked as well. So as I move around, I get that view um, of everything and I can see it. And we've got this uh, grid you'll notice appearing, potentially, which is the edge of the physical room. Obviously, the tracking is much better than my hacky solution, but that was good enough to get going. So what concepts have I got for developing with mixed and virtual reality? My hacky VR solution already sent data in and out of Unity to the real world. And that's how the handset and the tracking worked. So one of the ideas is to build interfaces to physical props in the virtual world. So perhaps we can use a, a handset to track a camera, a virtual screen in the same way as I did with my hacky setup. And then we can look at some interfaces, a control interface or buttons that float around the prop. And you can use the other handset, perhaps with the laser pointer feature, to um, trigger that and actually interact with the prop. And we'd have the CAD that makes the physical prop put it into the virtual world. So that appears in the virtual space as well and both are synced up in the same environment. But of course we can track moving items as well. So what if I were to put a tracker or a handset on something like this, which is a robotic vacuum cleaner? Um, I'd probably take the vacuum out because it's a bit noisy, but essentially if we were to put the handset on, obviously that would move in the virtual space. 
And uh, that would give us the possibility that we can track a moving robot. We could even control the robot from virtual reality so it moves in the physical space. But when we look for our virtual camera, which would be a screen mounted on the other handset, we'd see a virtual representation of the robot. And perhaps instead of just being a robotic vacuum cleaner, it would say a stack of Lego bricks. And then I could use the other handset to actually shoot with a virtual gun the virtual robot going around on the physical robot. And when I shoot it, it spins around in real life or does something, and that syncs up with the virtual world and some of the Lego bricks fall off. So we can actually mix reality with the virtual world, and we can also mix the interface so we can send data back to this robot to control it from the virtual world. So perhaps I could have a control panel that I shoot and that makes it drive or does a different pattern coming back over Bluetooth, actually controlling the robot from the virtual world and the representation from the physical robot being tracked back into the virtual world. So of course what you'd actually have would be a screen mounted on a handset like this so you'd get your virtual camera view into the virtual world and you'd have a trigger so you could shoot a gun. But it doesn't have to just be a Vive controller and a screen, it could be that I've got a 3D printed blaster with this mounted on it and the screen mounted on the viewfinder. So when I look through the gun sights I actually look into the virtual world essentially which is an augmented reality view of what's there. So one really great suggestion was a Ghostbusters um, proton pack or proton wand, basically the gun they have in Ghostbusters, but when you look through the virtual view, you see ghosts in the real world augmented onto it. And then you can of course shoot them and you shoot through into the virtual world. Taking that a step further, we could build an interactive installation. So say you go to a Comic Con and there's a prop display, perhaps not Ultron, perhaps there's an R2-D2 and an AT-AT and a bit of a Star Wars scene. And then basically you can interact with it. So someone hands you the blaster, which is maybe a Stormtrooper blaster or a lightsaber, and that's a Vive controller and a screen and the rest is 3D printed so it looks like the real prop and then when you look into the virtual world you see the same thing so the CAD that's made those physical props has been synced up and brought into the virtual world so they're in the same space but then you can see a Jedi training remote flying around or perhaps a stormtrooper shooting back at you and you can shoot them and the things explode but if you then shoot one of the physical items like an R2-D2 perhaps its head spins around in the actual physical prop and you could find that perhaps it's any R2-D2 that's just got another tracker on its head so one of the R2-D2 Builders Club guys can bring their R2-D2 and drive it bound, round by radio control the tracker tracks where it is in the physical world and brings its CGI representation into the virtual world so the whole thing's synced up and going a stage further than that of course the Jedi training remotes could actually be someone in another physical environment in virtual reality waving their handsets around able to see you shooting at them they could be somewhere else in the world actually controlling those training remotes or they could be a stormtrooper that then gets CGI'd brought into the virtual world broadcast over the internet and that could be a real person in America or France or somewhere shooting back at you. Of course most of these concepts don't actually need the headset although you could put it on and observe from a third person point of view to see what's going on or you could just have another tracker with another virtual screen so you can look into the virtual world and I think in a public setting at least or a comic con that makes things much more accessible rather than someone going immersive into virtual reality having to adjust the headset and sort it out and then basically you see them waving their arms around you can't see anything else if we just have these tracked virtual cameras on props that makes it much more accessible someone can just pick it up fire a couple of shots if they don't like it they can put it down and there's no trauma of actually blanking your eyes out and putting this headset on to play a virtual reality game but how easy is it to develop stuff like this? So it's pretty easy. I found this really good tutorial, HTC Vive tutorial for, for Unity on raywonderluch.com and I'll put the link in the description to this video if you want to check it out. It's quite a long page, but it shows you exactly how to uh, build a VR environment and use the Steam SDK, the scripting plugin, um, within Unity, which is a free game development platform. You only have to pay for it if you, I think you do over $100,000 of game sales in a year. So for hobbyists and doing things like this, is free um, and this tutorial is really good there's a zip folder you download that's got the sort of base environment and it goes through all the code you need to put in to make the hand controllers work and do various things so I've done uh, most of the tutorial this is the environment here we can move around in unity it's a simple room with some balls and things um, but obviously we've got the camera rig on the left here the controllers and these are uh, this is the inspector on the right that tells you all the properties uh, there's a bunch of scripts and some things you have to edit to get it working but it's very easy and if I play the game um, I can actually move around and move objects. Right so here I am in the environment this is a stock environment that comes with it I've done most of the tutorial but not all of it but I can pick up objects and throw them and knock things down that works pretty well so we can get any of these things push other objects with them and so on. 
See if I can knock all those things down. There's some more balls here. Here we are. So all the physics works. Whoops, I can almost throw things from one hand to the other as well. Whoops, let's get some more. But um, obviously we can import any CAD here. We don't have to have these blue balls. We can import something else or we can edit them and so on. Or we could build the whole thing up from scratch with the Steam SDK. And then instead of these objects, we could have uh, Ultron's head or something else. Whoops. There we go, so that seems to work pretty well and it's pretty easy to put together. So what I've done now is uh, made another camera view which is a child of one of the controllers so it stays synced with the uh, controller there. So now I don't need the headset, I can wave the uh, controller around and that makes me a camera view. And um, we can prove it to that because I can bring the other controller in shot. Uh, if I can work out, probably need to sort out the orientation here. It's not desperately easy, there it is. So there's my other controller just poking in. Not sure where the camera lens is supposed to be pointing out. It seems to be, yeah, well there we are, we're just about there anyway. So all I'd have to do now is uh, basically attach a screen on a cable, render that camera view out exactly like I did with my Hacky VR gear, and then I'd have a camera into the virtual world, and that could be built into the prop that I'm building. I could have another camera as well, like a top view with a fixed camera, and that could be a separate screen on the prop. So we could have a really elaborate blaster that's got one view into the virtual world and another camera to show you where you are and also keep score or something like that. So there's quite a lot of possibilities here for augmenting physical prop blasters or otherwise and putting virtual screens on that track the virtual world synced with the physical world they exist in. So there's a few options for screens to build into props. So we could use the seven inch screen I was using anyway. I've also got this five inch screen, but those are both HDMI. This one's actually a touch screen as well with a USB interface. So that could be uh, make a quite an interesting second screen on a prop for actually controlling part of the game. The other option of course is an Android phone or tablet and there's various Wi-Fi apps that will send um, camera views out of Unity over Wi-Fi so we could make it completely wireless um, but we'll have to see how that goes and what fits with the prop and the gameplay. I think this opens up quite a lot of possibilities. If you've got any ideas for gameplay let me know in the comments below. I'm really interested in ideas where we control hardware from the virtual environment and depending on what that hardware does, perhaps control from the physical environment as well, that sends data back into the virtual environment to make it do something. So we've got a two-way link. And we're actually controlling a physical thing and augmenting it essentially with the virtual reality world. And you can have things in either place where someone only looks in the physical world at the item and someone's only in the virtual world and there's a bridge between them perhaps. So let me know if you've got any good ideas. All right, that's all for now.